Greetings everybody and welcome back to the Bond Geek channel with me, our host, the name Stevens, Henry Stevens. Everybody, how do you do? And right off the bat, everybody, I want to talk about Casino Royale 67 and Never Say Never Again. Both of these films I consider a bit of the black sheep of the film franchise, everybody. Obviously staying out of continuity, though being adaptations of James Bond novels, everybody. If you want to know, my review of Casino Royale 67 was, I felt this film was so bonkers, but it was also so bad at the same time. I'm not going to lie, I did actually sort of enjoy it every time I ended up watching it. And Never Seen Ever Again for me was a good film. It was okay. There were things like Fasma Blush I thought was better than Fiona Volpe that was done in the film Fundable. But overall, if I was to sum up Never Seen Ever Again, everything in it was just done better in the film Fundable overall. But this made me think, everybody, made me want to ask the question, Casino Royale 67 or Never Seen Ever Again? Which is better? So I decided for this video, we're going to compare both films and I'm going to answer that question. Which one of them is better? Let's get into the comparison. Let's start off with story. When it comes to the story, the winner here for me would be Never Say Never Again, everybody. And this is for a very simple reason. Even though I mentioned earlier that everything in Never Say Never Again I felt was done better and fundable, it's still one of my favourite James Bond stories of all time. I've always loved the story of Fundable about Spectre seeing the nuclear warheads and holding the world to ransom and Bond going to discover them and find them and stop Spectre. It's a great story and I've always really enjoyed it. And the story is shown here. Yes, the story might have been done better in another film, but the key element of that story is still there and some really great stuff happens within this version of the story. You've got the game Domination, you've got some sort of action sequences, you've got some great characters that we shall go into later, everybody. The story, just in general, is better here. If you look at Casino Royale here, just for a comparison, Casino Royale is just way all over the place. The story doesn't make really much sense. It was really done in little segments, not really that much connection. They've tried to connect it as much as possible, but it doesn't really connect. And the Casino Royale story is really great, but it's not really done here. Granted, there are elements of the Casino Royale story. You've got Vesper, you've got the poker game, a sort of torture sequence, Vesper Lynn portraying a Bond here, but it's not enough, everybody. Honestly, if I was to compare the two, I just much rather prefer the story that I really love, one of my favourite Ian Fleming stories, in comparison to something that's messed it up. So the win here, without a shadow of a doubt, is Never Say Never Again. The characters, honestly, in comparison to the two, for me, are well a draw. If you look at um, Casino Royale here, you've got such a variety of wacky, bonkers, interesting characters. You've got the original Bond, so James Bond, David Niven, you got Peter Sellers as Evelyn Tremble, you got the new Miss Money Penny, you got Bond's daughter here, you got Woody Allen as the villain, Dr. Noah, you got little Terence Cooper in there, you got some amazing cameos of different people. Hey, you got Bernard Cribbins and Ronnie Corbett in this film doing some fun stuff. That's always really great for me because I'm such Honestly, a massive Bernard Cribbins fan here, everybody. You've got little Bond alumni coming in as well, like the actor playing Kronstein. You've, you've got so many different weird, bonkers, crazy characters. You can't help just really, really enjoy them and fall in love with them a bit here, everybody. But in comparison to Never Seen Ever Again, you might not find that these characters are as memorable as their counterparts, but they're still really good, decent characters. I think the Emil Largo in Never Seen Ever Again is really, really great. Barbara Carrera's Fasma Blush was better, I think, than Fiona Volpe when it came to the original film, Fundable. You've got a much better Phoenix Lighter than they've ever normally done in the series. You've also got an interesting Domino here. You've got her brother's a lot more fleshed out. There's some really interesting characters here. So I think a draw is absolutely fair in this section because I like them both, but for very, very different reasons. Casino Royale wins the intent and style, everybody, because Casino Royale aimed to be a, well, a comedy spoof that sends up the entire spy franchise, mocking James Bond and everything about the spy craze of the 60s. And to be honest, it delivers. When you look at the film, it might not be one of the greatest pieces of comedic geniuses, but it is funny in certain ways and in unintentionally funny in other ways. And I do enjoy the sort of gonzo, over-the-top, we're going to go absolutely crazy style of it. It set out to do something like that, and it delivered that. Whether you're a fan of that or not, or there's been other versions that have done it better, that's entirely up to you. 
if you look in comparison to Never Say Never Again, Never Say Never Again was Conan McClory saying, I can make a Bond film better than Howard R. Broccoli and Harry Saltzman. I can do it better. I can do my film better. And your film in every way was inferior to the original spy film franchise's Thunderball. So for me, the obvious winner here was Casino Royale. I'm not going to lie, everybody, straight off the bat, this is a win for Never Say Never Again. When you're trying to be faithful to the Bond source material, everybody, look, Casino Royale is in no way, shape or form ever going to win that. It was intentionally going away from that and going away from what Ian Fleming originally had designed and created and that feel he wanted to. Never Say Never Again feels more like a Bond story, feels more like something out of Ian Fleming's world in some capacity, everybody, compared to Casino Royale. So this one was an easy win for me. This was Never Say Never Again. When it comes to enjoyment value, I believe the winner here for me is Casino Royale. Now, if we just look at quickly Never Say Never Again, the reason I didn't pick this one, everybody, is because everything in this film, I just felt fundable overall did better, with the exceptions of things like Fatima Blush or Felix Leiter, but those are just little things. Casino Royale is just much more, even though I think Never Say Never Again is a better film, is a lot crazier movie and a bit more fun, a bit more of an experience and just something I just remember every time after watching it. Never Say Never Again, I think, is very forgettable, whereas Casino Royale 6 7, if once you watch it, you never forget that experience. You never forget what was coming out of it. And I enjoy more watching the stupid finale. I enjoy watching the spy school, how when Bond finds his daughter, the whole Scotland, um, you know, competition with the stone balls, all that stuff. I, I'm honestly much more would rather watch and enjoy, even though I think it's terrible, in comparison to a boring and dull never say never again, everybody. So the point here goes to Casino Royale. So everybody, the winner is, it's actually a draw. This makes sense to me a lot in comparing them because they are completely different movies trying to tackle and achieve very, very different things. I think there are things that Casino Royale 67 did better than Never Say Never Again and vice versa. They can be enjoyed for what they are in any shape or form. You can not enjoy them if you want, that's your own opinion. But if I want to watch, if I'm in the mood, let's say, for something fun, stupid, Casino Royale fits the bill. If I'm looking for a great Sean Connery Bond performance and something just a bit different than from the rest of the franchise, I can put on Never Say Never Again. So, in conclusion, if you look at this, I think both of them can be enjoyed for what they are. Will I think the Bond official films are much better in every shape or way? Yes, obviously. But these two films can be enjoyed and just seen for what they are. So that really is my comparison, everybody. But I want to know. Casino Royale 67 or Never Say Never Again? Which is your favourite? Comment down below and tell me your thoughts about this. As always, everybody, my name is Henry Stevens and I'm the Bond Geek. Goodbye.